welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's another of our twice yearly channel updates. Specifically, I'm going to reflect on three big computing trends before discussing what they may mean for this channel. But before that, let's briefly look back to see what's been happening on the channel since December 2023. Greetings! It's been a while since I've spoken to you outside, and so I thought we'd come and visit some trees. So, what's been going on? Well, the big event has been passing a million subscribers in March and unboxing the gold play button in April. And I'm still both staggered and humbled to have over a million subscribers on this channel, so thanks again to everyone who's clicked on that subscribe button. Reflecting on recent content and the most successful content, the most successful video of the past six or seven months has been the one in which I compared the performance of a Raspberry Pi 5 with an M100 PC. This video was made on a whim shortly after I did my N100 Mini ITX silent PC build, and if you're wondering, that PC has worked out very well indeed as my Linux Mint daily driver. The two other most popular videos have been storage media life expectancy and very useful small computing things. Whilst the episodes on the latest versions of the Zorin OS and Ubuntu Linux distros have also done well. And fairly soon, I expect reviewing Linux Mint 22. As always, since the last of these updates, I've tried to keep the content on the channel varied, and we've ever had videos on all kinds of different topics. I can't remember them all, but do not worry, I have copious notes. Oh yes, we've had videos on file formats, AI, Google Docs, a Linux Manifesto, Windows developments, and RISC 5 And I've also enjoyed making the videos where I try to use alternatives to Adobe applications, particularly in Linux. In the last six months, we've also had four new SBC reviews. Although the SBC and microcontroller content on the channel has been a bit dominated in the last six months or so by the Raspberry Pi 5, I accept that. We've had six Raspberry Pi 5 videos in the past six months. But I guess that was inevitable, given that we waited so long for the new Raspberry Pi 5, and it presented so many opportunities to make videos on Raspberry Pi 5 cooling, and cases, and software, and using its uh, PCIe connector to connect NVMe drives, things like that. But uh, all of those, if you like, obvious to make Raspberry Pi 5 videos have been made now, and so the SBC, the microcontroller content on the channel, will now get a bit more even, although I would welcome your feedback on how much you want to see Raspberry Pi on the channel, and which Pi. It doesn't have to be Raspberry Pi 5. There's lots of life left in the Pi 4, and the Pi 3, and the Zero, the Pico, etc. Let me know what Pis you'd like to see on the channel. Finally, before we think about the future, before we look ahead, I'd like to note that this video marks the anniversary of channel memberships, which are now two years old. And we've now got over 500 channel members who get a weekly update from me, a picture and a piece of text I write every Friday, and we have every four weeks a members only video. So thanks to all channel members for supporting the channel. But now I think I'm going to go back inside. I think it's going to rain. Jude has not lived up to expectations here in the UK. And so I think we'll now retreat to the studio to reflect on the wonderful world of computing. Right, here we are back inside where we're going to think a bit about what's going on in the computing industry and, and, and more broadly. And I think the first big trend right now is what we could call accelerating ISA evolution. Or in other words, there is increasing competition between ISAs, between instruction set architectures, x86, ARM, RISC V, etc. And if we go back not much more than about five years, we basically had x86 processors in desktop computers and laptops and servers, and we had ARM processors in most mobile devices, phones, tablets, that, that type of thing. But these days, that distinction, that model has clearly been broken. We've had for several years now, Apple having ARM processors in its new laptops and desktops, M1, M2, M3, now M4. We've got Microsoft with its latest Copilot plus PCs, having all the new hardware coming out, new laptop hardware has got uh, 
Qualcomm ARM processors as well. And I'm pretty certain that in time, we're gonna see an awful lot of the mobile end of the Windows hardware going towards being ARM-based. And we're also seeing servers increasingly using ARM processors. We've had Amazon developing its Graviton ARM server chips for a few years now. They're now in their third generation. We've got Google having just announced Axiom and we've got Alibaba with its Yitian server ARM processors with up to 128 cores. And so clearly we're no longer in a world where we have on one side desktop, laptop and server computers using x86 and mobile devices using ARM. That, that, that's changed. And of course, we've got the rise of RISC-V, which is already established in the embedded space, but it's increasingly looking like RISC-V, as we keep seeing on the channel where they keep reviewing different RISC-V boards. It's increasingly likely we're going to get end-user computers using RISC-V processors and servers using RISC-V processors. And I also think what's been going on with the rise of ARM is going to be significant for RISC-V because I think with, with Apple, in particular with Microsoft, having now ported in a big way towards using ARM as well as x86, porting to another ISA is, is much less of a, of, of a barrier, I, I think. So it's going to be very interesting to see what goes on in the next few years. I think five years' time, we're going to have a, a much more competitive ISA space. Mass is more use of ARM, more use of RISC-V, less use almost certainly of x86. It's going to be interesting to watch. Now, the second big theme I want to highlight, I have great difficulty giving a name to, but I've called it here increasingly sufficient hardware to try and capture the notion that for most people, most of the time, most computers now offer sufficient processing power. And therefore, the need to upgrade computers is a lot less than it was. You know, if I think back to the 1990s, I used to upgrade my desktop PC roughly every two years. And I had a sort of rule in my head, which was I could only upgrade when I knew I'd get at least a doubling of processor power and memory and other resources, storage, etc. And you could do that easily every two years, sometimes every 18 months back in back at that period of time. But these days, that's not the case. The benefits of upgrading are incremental and you always lose to win as well in computing. You always get certain things that are worse as you upgrade these days. And that matters if you're a company in the computing industry because it's more difficult to sell new stuff. And it matters if you're running a channel like this one where you're trying to think about what to talk about in the world of computers. And this links to the fact that increasingly we don't need these massive great desktop PCs. I know some people say you need desktop PCs for gaming and video editing and all this stuff. And to some extent that's true and to a large extent it isn't. Okay, in the absolute top end gaming people will always argue you need very, very powerful machines. But, you know, many PCs these days do the vast majority of things that most people want to do on a computer, you know, browsing the web, social media, email, what, what, watching media, web processing spreadsheets, etc. Most stuff happens on, can happen on small hardware, on things like a, a tiny Pi 5, let alone on mini PCs and things. So the, the need to upgrade, the need to have great big bits of computing power, that's changing. And I think that that presents a real challenge for the computing industry in terms of how it goes forward. And for people like myself who comment on and make videos about the computing industry. The third big theme I want to highlight is the obvious one, which is AI, although I've called it here the rise of the cognitive computing age. In other words, it's about a shift in the focus of computing development from connectivity in the network computing age to performing cognitive work in the cognitive computing age. And the diagram we're looking at here, the five ages of computing, is a model I first put forward in this book, Digital Genesis, all the way back in 2017, when I defined the cognitive computing age as being a period of time in which the focus of computing development will be on performing cognitive work, and in which most computers will be able to either possess or remotely access some form of AI. And clearly that prediction has come true. We are in the cognitive computing age. This said, whether we wish to be is, is another matter, and there's obviously masses of debate about this. Although clearly, if we think back to the, the other two themes here, it's rather useful for the computing industry to say, no, we haven't got sufficient hardware because you need new hardware to do all this AI stuff. And that, of course, has impacts on ISAs. One of the reasons we're moving towards ARM is to try and get more and more power for the same amount of energy input, better energy efficiency, that type of thing. So these things all link together. Anyway, those are the three big themes. And the final thing I'd say about them is that they're interesting to me 
partially because they're interesting just full stop, but partially because the way they all progress is not a matter of computer science. Yes, there's computer science behind them all, but they're not really about development in hardware and software anymore in terms of how they're gonna play out. They're about geopolitics, they're about economics, they're about um, where people choose to spend their money. You know, for lots of years, we've all spent relatively in society a lot of money on computing. We could spend less money on computing now and have all the stuff we need. That's not what the computing industry wants us to do. Um, we could decide to embrace AI and spend masses of money on AI, but maybe we don't wanna do that. So actually, the trends here are not under the control of the computing industry, and I find that very interesting. Anyway, those are the trends, but what do they mean for this channel? Well, I've just posed what is, for me at least, a very important question, and I'd love to say I had a very good answer. And right now, I don't. And um, what I can say is that the increasing competition in the ISA space is something I've been talking about already on the channel for quite a while. I've been looking at RISC-V for a couple of years. I've been looking at ARM processors because of SBCs for a very, very long time. And that is clearly something I'm going to continue to do on the channel. There are going to be more RISC-V boards, bits of RISC-V hardware. I'm looking forward to showing over the next few years the move towards mainstream end-user RISC-V devices, following what happened in the server space there, increasing rise of ARM. Um, I hope to get hold at some point of a you know, mini ITX ARM motherboard. I think low-cost ARM self-built hardware is going to be very interesting. So that first theme is something that will continue across the channel in a big way, I'm sure, in, in, in the next few years, and I'm fairly certain that'll be pretty successful. The last theme, the one about AI, I struggle with because, as I've just made clear, I have been thinking about AI, writing about AI, doing consultancy in that area, doing lots of work with companies in that area, not so much now, but an awful lot over the last previous sort of 10 years. So I've been really embraced in, in those debates and that technology and what it, what it can be and where it can go. And yet, whenever I do anything about AI on this channel, it either does okay or more normally, it's a complete disaster. And I continue to fail to find the way to put AI on this channel, even though it is clearly a big thing going on in the world of computing. If you have any ideas about what I should be doing in terms of AI that people might actually watch, um, I'd love to hear them. Because when I do make stuff about AI, it gets great feedback, but not many people watch it. And unfortunately, there are practicalities of running a YouTube channel. You have to have people watching things or the channel doesn't continue to be viable. So for me, I am still almost at a loss about what to do about how to reflect this really important part of the computing industry development on, on explaining computers. The middle trend, the one about hardware being increasingly sufficient, is one that in certain respects reflects sort of where this channel has always been. This has never been a channel where I've been saying, let's look at the latest and the greatest in hardware, we must have the latest this and that, and we all need 128 gig of memory and all this stuff people talk about these days. You know, perfectly possible to do most of what you want to do on the four gig machine. That's why I often show that type of thing. So the fact this channel has always had a sort of down to earth view of what do we really need to get things done as opposed to what could you buy if you want to spend the maximum possible, that's, that, that's a quite a positive thing. And I think there's gonna be a lot of debate around this as we get the end of Windows 10 and you know an awful lot of hardware that can't officially anyway run Windows 11 and therefore probably also Windows 12. And you know, what do people do with that? What operating systems do they use? You know, there's a lot of debate around that going on. So it's a tricky one to the extent that a theme which basically says we could all just stick with what we got for a long period of time and just maintain it offers less opportunities to talk about computing. But that's something that um, I'm more up for the challenge of, although it's still something that's a tricky moving forward. So that's all I can really say about those themes. I'm certain the themes are right. And of course, other things are going on. I'll be looking at quantum computing again on the channel fairly soon, but I think those are the things that reflect where we are. If you think I'm massively off, let me know. I'd be always interested in your feedback on what's going on and what I can do with it in terms of the channel. Final couple of things to say, uh, more housekeeping really, but one of them is scams. There are masses of scams out there. Constantly, every day I'm getting people emailing me saying, are you really explaining underscore, not explaining computers underscore computers on this platform? I'm not. 
If you ever get a message from me, it isn't from explaining computers, no spaces, no hyphens or anything. It's not from me. And if you ever get a message from me, it says you've won a prize. It's also not from me. But uh, this happens all the time. So please just look out for scams. If you get a message saying go to Telegram, it is always a scam regardless. This is just one of the sad realities of the modern world. But I do get so many hundreds and hundreds of messages a week from people being caught out or potentially caught out by scams. So please, please don't get caught out by that. If I don't talk about something in a video or on the website, it's nothing to do with explaining computers. Talking the website on the positive side, I have managed to keep the website up to date since I uh, did a major revamp of it towards the end of uh, 2023. So if you ever want to find videos in different categories and things, you can always go to the website, either click on the topics at the top or click on, on the video section and find a particular videos category. I am keeping it up to date. I hope in that context, it's a useful resource. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.